I, so I sort of missed this video when I was not making videos uh, ages ago. But I decided that actually I need to do a video on this bike because it is so stupid. So this is the fact of Hanzo TT bike, as you can see here. And first of all, it looks very elegant. I'm not going to lie. Obviously, it has disc brakes, which is neither here nor there. Um, but, you know, the mono riser situation looks quite nice. You know, it's all very integrated, not a cable in sight. And you're like, yeah, pretty good TT bike. Can't really complain um, at the moment. But we're going to go into one feature of this bike, which I think is... For an average human, very, very bad. So here's some dodgy wind tunnel testing. There's no units. I don't like to have graphs with no units. Like, what are they measuring? Is that wattage? Is that, this is just TT bike performance. I think, you know, I assume this is your angle here. Again, that would be nice to have some labels. And I have no idea what the other unit is. I guess it's just trying to say it's fast, which is fine. Um, so you can see here again, it's quite wide. Um, basically just to minimize interactions between the wheel and the frame quite a classic design pinarello been doing it for a long way uh they chat a lot of stuff i mean you know why would you trust these people to tell you that it's not faster i mean obviously they're going to say it's faster so i don't think there's too much to hit me to here but you'll see here with the single piece fork external steerer combined with mono riser um so what this means is that basically the fork goes all the way as you can see where my mouse is up to the top of the bike which I think is a really nice idea, but there's obviously one issue that you're going to see in a minute. This is the issue. So it sits on the top, which is fine if you know your position 100% and will never change that position. However, if you want to change the position, you have to cut it. So if you have to cut it, then that means you can't go higher again. You can only go lower. So it seems like a real big issue with time trials because I think time trial for bikes, for me at least, you want to adjust them. Like every year, people always are like, oh, maybe I'll just tinker this, change that. Imagine if you turned up to a wind tunnel, like as an amateur or a track day, and we're like, I'm going to go test it. And then you couldn't get it higher because it's this. Like, okay, it looks really elegant. It's quite stiff. And you can see from this angle quite clearly, it literally comes from the fork, like all the way through. So like the headset is probably an effort and I reckon cabling is annoying. But like, it just doesn't really make sense but maybe it's just me and I don't understand it. I'm pretty sure once you cut that, like that's it. And then it just doesn't, it just doesn't add up. Like it must be better to not have it as like, have it as two systems, surely. Because otherwise you just have no adjustability on this bike. It just seems like a real, like a lack of foresight. Like maybe you could put spaces under the pads, but then I guess the bars wouldn't be. Like, I just don't get it. Like, why would you make a time trial bike where people, where position is like the most important thing? by far and ease of changing position is probably something that people look to a lot and come out with a bike like this it just doesn't make sense to me i just unless i'm not understanding this and it is separate but i'm pretty sure they said it's the same thing which means if you cut it then and it has to be at the top then you're just screwed so you just need to have one tt position yeah i just it's just it's just mind-boggling anyway we'll go on to the rest of the bike so like I don't know, the seat stays and stuff. It's quite thick, so it, it uses, like, you see how you step a rule where, you know, if it was a three to one rule, so you basically can have a really thick and really thin, but now that's gone. So you can see the forks are significantly thicker than like a 2015 time trial bike, for example, um, which, you know, I guess is a good thing. Um, the handlebars, I'm not sure how wide they are. I mean, hopefully they'd be like 38 standard or 40 standard instead of like 44s as they used to be back in the day. I think my time trial bars are like 42 wide because they're integrating stuff, I can't change them. It's a bit of a shame. Seat post, I think, apparently is the same as the slick. I think there's nothing in seat post. I just can't imagine that there there is because it's so far back in the bike. Like, obviously, it's like it's something, but I, I doubt there's really much to go for. And then drop out again is interesting. Not going for specialized, where specialized have like a massive gap for the UCI version. You see time trial for TTs. They have like a little thing that goes in between, um, like a food storage thing. But here again, looks like they think that it's better just to have it in one continuous flow. And again, here you can see it's pretty close as well. Not like crazy close, but decent. But obviously, they think, uh, having said that, that like you don't want to have the fork near the wheel, or I guess the seat stays near the wheel either. Um, you, but you do want to have the wheel near the frame. Apart from that, I wouldn't really say there's anything that spectacular. It's just the front end, which I think is a really dodgy design and not ideal, um, because it just it's going to complicate a lot of things. Um, and I yeah, I just I'm not a huge huge fan of that. Uh, but anyway, those are my thoughts. Obviously, let me know yours below. 
am I completely wrong? Can you change it? And can you not, don't have to cut it, but I'm pretty sure you have to cut it. And once you cut it, it's game over. And uh, that makes this time trial bike for an amateur. I don't think you could buy it. I think it would just be ridiculous because you just have to have one position only and that would be it. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy. I'll see you in the next one.